Hello, and welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Basics, we're going to take a look at components. And there's all sorts of components. You can see them in the examples. Well, all through the examples, there are some components, dials and sliders. I see them there. Sliders, keyboards, a component. So they're all throughout here, but down in the collections, there's a collections of components. There. Got it. These are older components, uh, or that have been around for a while. <laughs> uh, now maybe three, three or four years old, this one. So uh, there's steppers, and the steppers allow you to hold and drag as well and go either way on that or up and down even same with same with the the actual box there and you can step through strings as well as numbers check boxes and radio buttons similar to in html there's a button here's a pane color pickers changing the color up there this is a small color picker there's a com the the default color picker is a big color picker we can upload pictures uh, that would then upload into this window. That's a, a Zim window there. This is where we can type in a text area. Here are tabs up here. This is a grid. Uh, when this first loaded, there was a little waiter that shows up there. We also have a progress bar now. Uh, this thing's called an indicator. And I suppose that's it on there, dials and sliders. So the dial and slider are almost exactly the same, except the slider goes sort of sideways and the dial doesn't. All right, well, there's a look through some of the basic components, F11. There's also a variety of components that were introduced in Zim 10. So here's a collection of things that were introduced in Zim 10. And I remember there being a bunch of components at that time as well. Uh, the radial menu. So here's a radial menu. Ooh. Or out from the side. It's kind of a special case, I suppose. Here's uh, a list. So we've had the list for a while, but this is a, a drop-down list that allows you to do things like expand out. I live in Hamilton and Dundas. And there's a picture in there. Wow. So it can be colorful like this, or this is an example of uh, just using little indents in there. Pluses and minus. You can also use arrows or custom things. Here's what that might look like uh, in a little collapsible thing, like a pull, almost like a pull down. Well, it's a pull down, basically. And these have special... Um, Let's drag and swipes. And what does color do? Oh, there's a big color picker. I don't even remember what color picker does. <laughs> I don't think it does anything. I'm not sure how it got on there. <laughs> uh, maybe it changed color of something in here. Anyway, this is uh, a... We're scrubbing through a sprite, I think. Yeah, I think it's a sprite or animating it. And then this is doing the frames per second. <laughs> Okay, so these are special things that are added into our pull down to be able to to do that. Oh, I closed ten. I'm not sure if there's any. Uh, do we call the wrapper? I think we call the wrapper a control. So, if if we are just controlling a bunch of things, such as a tile controls a bunch of shapes or whatever you're putting in the tile, and same with the wrapper, it controls a bunch of things. Then we put that in a control. Uh, beads, I can't remember. I think beads might be a control as well. So those things are controls. Here's a D-pad. So this is another one that we added uh, after or later. It's basically for mobile. Well, it could be used for either. But there it is. It's just a round little thing like that. You put your thumb on it or, or finger on it and you can make it go back and forth. Here's uh, just a two-way one. So it doesn't go up and down. Here are two of them going two ways. So that's almost like a quadcopter. And I'm going to now control this with um, this up and down. <laughs> up and down, there we go. Okay, so um, there's some other components there too. Um, all right, well, why don't we go in and, and code one, shall we? 
Yay. Oh. Um, <laughs> Why don't we go into code one? But just before we do, let me show you where they are in the docs. So here's the Zim docs. You would go to the Zim site, hit docs. And then they're under the display objects. So there's some basic display objects to start. Then there's shapes. So we don't really call those components. And then here are the components. Labels, label on path, label on arc, buttons, checkbox, radio button, toggle, tip, panel, pane, window, page, layer, waiter, progress bar, indicator, list, stepper, slider, selector, dial, tabs, pad, d-pad, radial, radial menu, color picker, text editor, keyboard, and organizer goes on to the top of a list, scrambler, connectors, marquee, loader, text area, tag, those overlay HTML type things. Okay, you can open those up and you can see they've got lots of uh, parameters. Many of the parameters are quite similar, like color. Color does the color of font. Background color does the color of the background. It was halfway through, uh, it was halfway through Zim where we made some adjustments there. It used to be color was the, the background color and then we decided to, to allow better control over font rather than have to make a custom a custom label each time uh, to change a color of it that we we added color in right into the parameters and made everything consistent and stuff like that so that was sort of an overhaul at some point i can't remember uh zim 9 maybe all right so uh now we can go in and code a component yay <laughs> I've made a new file here called components and we'll go grab we'll start that remind you how to how we can start things anytime you're down below on one of these pages uh, usually the first option here will take you back up to the top where you can then go and find places like code and we want to copy the template copy and right click and paste or control B. All right, and we'll call this Zim Components. Yay, are you excited? So this is in Zim 4. If you're watching this at a later time, you know, you have to watch it. Maybe in future Zims, more components will come to be. It, it's a little bit unlikely. I mean, we, we've now been at this for 10 versions and most of the components are there and the components we are adding are a little bit sort of, unusual. here's a scrambler. <laughs> you know, it's like little ready-made parts that might go into e-learning or make puzzles and stuff. But we, we don't want to do too many of those things. We want you guys to code that. So we're certainly slowing down and adding new components. That's what we said in Zim 10 as well. <laughs> we almost doubled the size of Zim. So you never, you never know, but we think we're, uh, we're certainly reaching maturity. So that's a circle. One thing that's nice is this is how we make a circle. New circle. Let's open that up. And if you want to make a button instead, you go new button. Uh, these parameters might be wrong, but let's see new button center dot drag we don't usually drag buttons i'm not sure what that's going to look like open in browser plus so uh, or open in a browser and and there's a button uh, which we can drag <laughs> if, we, if we really wanted to but isn't that neat so basically we we made a new component just the same way as we made our new circle or a new rectangle that we've been working with before a Let's get rid of the drag here. We don't usually drag components. So how about a new dial? Save that. Refresh here. And there's a new dial showing up. Why don't we dot ska that to see it a little bit bigger twice. And here's a dial. These things are called indicators. We can also put numbers around the dial. We can set mins and max. So there's a bunch of components. Also, this dial only goes to there. Uh, we can make it continuous, in which case it'll just keep on going around. 
as well. We can also make the value of the dial go up as it goes around. That's a little bit unusual, but there is a setting to make it do that. The dial's quite a complex thing, actually. You can also click to, to various parts, and you can use the, the up and down arrows or right and left arrows as well uh, to do that. There's a default sound style, which is kind of fun. That would be sound colon true like that. And then it turns the dial to look like this and operate like dials do in sound um, in sound apps. So that's a little bit different. Instead of bringing the dial around with the, the finger like that, you see it's not working, it's just an up and down motion. So that's how they do that in those applications. So this is an option where you're just moving up and down. Um, the This thing, what is that called again? A highlight or something like that? Well, uh, let's go take a look. So I, I can't see the top. If I want, I can just, oh, I can't even click on that because I am, that's the, it's already active. Huh. Okay, well, I have to scroll a little bit then. Coming back here, trying to get to the docks. Oh, I already have the docks open. <laughs> uh, what were we looking at? Dial. Yeah. And it is called, I'm just looking in the parameters here, accent. That's it. So we added that in Zimcat, actually. A uh, bunch of accent options. Uh, in Zimcat, we introduced a synthesizer, like a synth class. And uh, we also made sliders and dials sort of work with those synthesizers. You want to see it? So this one I'll head back to Zim. It is in the cat here. Well, or it's in examples. You can find it in, in cat or examples. This is the synth pad. And right here, there's the synth. <clears throat> you have to press to make sound play. This is what a slider looks like in the um, in the with an accent, and here's what a dial looks like. Uh, by the way, that was I, I clicked it like that, and it just stops it. <laughs> this is a selector. That's also a new component that we didn't talk about. That's called a selector. That, and it can work in a, a grid section like this, or it can be in a big long line. All right, so cool, huh? Some customized components. Okay, back into the coding of all this then. So how do we find out what the dial is at? Uh, and another thing we might want to do sooner than later is bring in a picture uh, this is, is in basics. We're already at the fifth one, and and we're going. Uh, or are we the sixth one? I'm not sure which. Uh, anyway, some <laughs> some number, and we haven't yet seen a picture. That that might be important so that you guys know that we can do that. Why don't we do something where we'll bring in a picture and we'll change it? It's alpha with a dial, or we can change its scale with a slider or something like that. Does that sound like a good little mini project? Here? Okay. Let's do that then. So we'll take the sound off. That. Go back to our other dial. We also might want to move this out of the way of the picture, <laughs> which is probably going to be here in the middle. Uh, we can move the dial down to the corner. So we won't scale it twice as big either. Uh, but instead we'll pose the dial. So we'll get rid of the center pose if you want to position it around the edges pose is the easiest way to do it and we can say something like 50 comma 50 from the left comma bottom like that and when we refresh here there's the dial maybe we can bring that in to 100 and 100 holding down the control key selecting both those changing them to 100 yeah 70 70 there we go. By the way, if positioning something like that is bothersome, like if you'd rather just drag this and position it, you can actually do that with a thing called place, dot place. So you have to 
put it somewhere, first of all, but you could just add to dot place or center dot place or keep it pose dot place. But watch what happens once you hit place. This will be a bit of a pain in the neck with, uh, with my show you here. Anytime I go back to that, this thing pops in behind, so it's kind of annoying to show you live console stuff. But anyway, it's saying place object to get new thing. I'm going to put this over here for now. I pick that up and I go, well, you know what? I like it. They're, they're better. And now I look at my console and my console tells me where that is located right there. Gives me X and Y if we want, but usually we would just copy this loc right here. Copy console and I wouldn't bother doing any of this positioning again nor the place I'll leave it in there just so you can look at it if you want but I would just dot loc that and this is gone now when I refresh well, there it is it located at that so we used to use a, a, a grid to help us place things as well like you can say hey give me a new grid and we can look at the pixels or the percentage of, of, of placement but uh, then I just thought hey why don't, why don't we just dr let them drag it let them let you drag it and then we'll tell you where you dropped it and so that's that's pretty good and so I use that a fair bit if I'm aligning. The other thing I might use for components is a tile. We saw a tile in the last Zim Basics. A tile might allow us to tile a bunch of components here along the bottom if we've got a bunch of them. If we've only got a couple, there's no point really in tiling it. We'll just add an, a slider here, put it here. But uh, you can also tile components. All right, so that's a little bit about that. Fine, great, there we have a dial. We're gonna get a picture in though. Now the canvas is a, a big picture, so we don't use image tags from HTML, like the HTML DOM, we don't use an image tag. Image tags also have what's called lazy loading sort of built into them, so they will load in whenever they're ready to load in. With interactive media, we tend to want to know when our images are available for us so that we aren't, you know, spinning this thing and there's nothing there yet to spin on. might give us an error if it's not loaded in yet. Um, so we, CreateJS gives us what's called Preload.js. It's one of their libraries, along with Easel, which gives us the canvas bitmap object model that we've talked about, Bob. And then um, there's tween.js, which gives us animation through create.js, and preload and sound.js. Those are the four modules of create.js. We generally use them all, so we just bring in create.js as a whole, and then Zim wraps many things in there, including preloading. So we don't have to worry. We had to make a, a, load, a thing called a load queue, and we put various properties that we, or things that we wanted to load. We'd run the load queue, we'd get an event. And uh, we used to do that. Uh, we wrap it with frame.loadassets, plural, like that. And we would, we would put the assets in there. And then we would do a frame dot on when those assets are complete. So when they've be lo been loaded, then we would call uh, an arrow function or some sort of function there. And then basically in here is where we would do all our code because our assets are now ready. So we would wait for frame dot on ready, then we would load assets, and then we would do our code in here. After a while, we said, okay, why don't we just load the assets in the frame call? So about halfway through Zim, we switch to that. And generally, we do it that way. We can still load assets on demand if we want. Assets are things like sound and images, uh, for the most part. Video is done in a slightly different way. We, we uh, sort of stream video into a bitmap, and the bitmap constantly shows the video. There's a Zim Bits version on that if you want to see that. But generally, when we say assets, we're, we're talking, well, fonts maybe too, um, but uh, these are outside things that we're loading, assets. We put them in an assets folder, and uh, that can be sound, images, JSON files, whatever we might need. 
Okay, so that's all being done through CreateJS's preload.js in the background, but we've simplified it to make it easier. So we're no longer doing it this way, but rather we pass in the assets we want as the next parameter. So the, whatever the assets are, and then we might have a path. A path is a directory to the assets. Just a second, I've lost my, my scroll wheel's not working. How do I do that again? It's one of these things. I think it's this one. Okay. Doot, 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 doot. And I'll turn off and on my mouse. And yay, I have my little button in the middle is doing sideways scroll again. Sorry about that. Okay, so assets and path we're passing in there, but now we need to uh, define those, I suppose, right here. Of our assets, oh, const these days, const assets is equal to, and here we would put a list of any assets that we want to load. And const path is equal to the directory where those are. That's optional. You can put the directory to where they are right in the call to the asset if you want. And you can. Um, uh, what was I going to say? There's a, there's also there's a, a bunch of different ways that you can load assets with object literals. You can uh, have an asset object with an ID and um, folders and stuff. Anyway, there's there's all sorts of options, but generally the easiest way is to make an array of your assets, put them all in the same folder, and just add an asset here. Let's have a look, see if we have any assets. We have no assets, so I'll make a folder, new folder called assets. Enter, and in there we'll put an asset, which I don't have. Let's go to Zimcat and see what assets are in Zimcat. A book and a disk. Oh, gosh, I didn't quite expect that, but that's Dr. Abstract. <laughs> very, very... <laughs> oh, there's a bunch of people on... Oh, and Dr. Abstract is a guru. Okay, so how about um, a cat? That seems a bit more... Uh, generic. Those are all, by the way, in the in the book for Dr. Abstract, if, if you wanted to see those. <laughs> uh, kind of startled me. All right, so there's a cat.png. I'll copy that. Copy. And we'll pop on up into basics and paste. Paste. So now we have a cat.png, I think. <laughs> it should be a cat.png. Yeah, there it is. Cat.png um, here in the assets folder. Uh, therefore, we will say cat.png here. P and G in the assets folder. If we only have one asset, we don't even need to put the list. But, but anyway, it doesn't, doesn't matter. And so now we are passing this asset into uh, here. And there's the path as the next two parameters. The parameter after, by the way, is a new waiter. A waiter is a component that will uh, just give us three little dots if, if we're loading. So that's a waiter or a new progress bar. Oops. Though that's a progress bar, which is a little uh, a circle that fill, like sort of has a ring that fills up. That's a progress bar, or you can specify a rectangle progress bar, but we actually defaulted to a circu circular progress bar. It's be a little bit different, I suppose. Uh, we, philosophically, we scratched our head and said, is a, is a ring a bar? <laughs> and we're kind of going, uh, I guess, you know, usually a bar is considered rectangular in shape, but you can have circular bars. <laughs> so, um, anyway, um, that's how we can load in assets. And now we know that they're included. And if we want to see it, we just go asset like that, uh, cat.png dot center. And, and we'll have a picture of a cat showing up. Interesting. <laughs> and there's a picture of a cat which happens to almost fit exactly into our rectangle, but that's, that happens to be just a coincidence. It happens to be 
I guess roughly that. We can do different things with that. We can say dot scale. Well, we, we can certainly dot scale it and just manually do it 0.5 dot center. And now the cat is half as big and centered. Or we can use a scale two, like so. And we can scale to the stage and some amount of it, half, half the stage. That would be half the stage width. So that's probably a quarter of the stage width. And this is a quarter of the stage width. And here are the other two quarters of the stage width. If uh, we had something high, uh, the next thing would scale it to 10% uh, of the height. So it's either going to be 50% of the width or 10% of the height. And therefore, it's now 10% of the height starts to break up. If you take an image that's really big and scale it small, it always will look a little bit crumbly like that. So you just have to be a, a touch careful. And same with if you scaled it really, really big as well. So we wouldn't want to do that. Anyway, I think scale to the stage, if we want to keep this here, 60% uh, and 60%, I guess. Be. That looks about right, wouldn't you say? All right, a couple things about images, though. Uh, you're going to run into a permissions problem if you try and view this in a browser without taking initial precautions. It's a, a protection against JavaScript Canvas being sort of tainted, and, and it's all JavaScript uh, Canvas libraries. So um, they'll all run into that problem. It doesn't, it doesn't come into effect here in Browser Plus, and it also won't come in effect to me if I'm viewing this in a browser here. But watch this, if I close this browser, so I, now I have no, I have no uh, Chromes open, and I say open in browser, like that. No, oh, it worked. <laughs> hey, why'd you work? Maybe I haven't interacted yet, F12. It did work. I must have had another Chrome open somewhere in the world. Oh, um, I think there's a Chrome. Yeah, OK. So I've got another Chrome open. Um, you'll run into an error that uh, tells us that that there's a cores, a cores error. And so what we did is, well, you know, it's a little bit complicated, but you, you, you need to know it. I, I do want a browser open. I can open this up in a browser. Uh, let me take you to, in Zim, under tips down here at the bottom. So if you ever have any problem with things in Zim, tips is a great place to look. We try and tell you about anything that you might have a problem with. And in tips is images. Both images and sound will have the same issue. Images can be loaded with frame. See the frame above. When you view images in the web locally, this is only a local issue. If you try and view images on the canvas locally and then apply interactive JavaScript to it, that's when you get this security error that mentions cores, cross-origin sharing. And the issue will go away on a server. That's no problem. But um, the way you get around it is follow these instructions for Firefox, follow these instructions for Chrome. So there's this flag right here that goes on the end of your Chrome icon. So uh, yeah, I guess I can show you. Here's my Chrome icon. So I, I choose Properties. And here it is. And there's, there's my flag that I've added to Chrome. Um, but it, you need to open up Chrome from this icon. Otherwise, you'll get the error. I already had a Chrome open, and so I'm not getting the error. Right? But if you, um, if you close all your Chromes and open it up from the icon, that's great. If you try and open it up from a taskbar, that's bad. Okay? Or if you open it up from Adam the first time without it already being open, um, again, bad. You need to put this on your icon. Allow file access from files. Nice. <laughs> There's a little space in there. All right, so we try and go over that in here. 
If you're on the Mac, there's how you do it on the Mac. Once again, if you're on a server, no problem. Um, there's some more things. Sound also has the, the security error issue. And also you have to interact with something before you can play sound. All right, but if you get Browser Plus, which is an Atom package, it's called Browser Plus, and it's uh, right here. So I'm right-clicking and open in Browser Plus right there. Then it doesn't care about that security error. All righty. There's an asset then, cat.png. And we'll use this dial to adjust the alpha of the cat. So we might, uh, there's two, two ways to figure out what the dial is, is telling us. There's the traditional event way, which is with an on method. And for that, we would want to store this in a variable then. Const dial is equal to that. And then we would say dial.on. So we can apply the on method to any display object. Uh, and then we can capture an event. So on change is the event type for the dial. Whenever it changes, we'll call this arrow function right here. Then we could, uh, we could find out what the value is by saying zog dial dot uh, current value. Value is a keyword in JavaScript, so we tend not to use it, but instead have said current value. And let's see what we've got going on. Once again, it's a little bit hard with this because as soon as I go to change a dial, it's going to go in behind. So why don't we open that up in a new browser? And I can F12. F12 is a, a shortcut to get to your console. I was doing some mobile testing, it looks like. So taking it off mobile there. We're looking at our console now, and I'm changing the dial. One, two, three, four, five. And if I go backwards, to zero. And go all the way to there, to 10. So this is going from zero to 10 in steps. So we don't have to go in steps if we don't want to. And for that, we would start changing the parameters of the dial. If we take a quick look at the parameters of a dial, the first few are min, max. So we can say uh, instead of 0 and 10, which are the defaults, we can adjust those. If indeed we're going to use the alpha, then we would want the minimum to be 0. We will want the maximum to be 1. And we probably don't need steps. So we can say a step of 0. If you say a step of 0, that means it will be more analog. And I'll just do a whole bunch of decimals, which will be fine. That's the width of the dial, the background color, the indicator color, and a bunch of other things that we can do to set up the, the dial. Okay. So inside of here, uh, let's go to the Zimduo technique just so that you can know what parameters we're using here. But we wouldn't really have to to change the min and max in the step. They're the first three parameters, so we could have just thrown those in. But here's a min of zero, which would be default, so we wouldn't really need to put that there. And a max of one, we would have to change that though. And then the step of um, zero. Okay, we refresh here. The dials changed a little bit on us where it no longer has the, the um, gosh, what do we call those things again? The ticks, we no longer have the ticks. Um, let's open it up over here, refresh. No longer have the ticks, and there's the dial values. You can see that they're uh, decimal, big decimal values.
we can bring back the ticks if we want. There's a parameter that says use ticks and we can bring them back. I won't bother now. But what we want to do is apply this change to the cat's alpha. So that would be something like, oh, we need a reference because this was this was the picture of the cat, but we, we don't have a reference to it anymore. So we would go uh, const cat is equal to that. And then down below, we can say cat dot alpha is equal to dial dot current value. The dial itself, as it spins, will update the stage just in case. If we wanted to, we could stage dot update, but I think we would be fine with um, the dial itself is needing to be updated, so we don't really need that. Watch what happens. We refresh here. Oh, uh, oops, mm, strange. Okay, see what's happened? We're starting the dial at zero, basically. And so as soon as I move the dial and change it, that's like a very low alpha. The cat is just barely there. So what we might want to do is start uh, the, um, I guess, the dial off at 1, which would be in here. Um, current value equals, oh, not equals, is 1. So that starts off the dial with the current value of 1. We, we can't actually tell, but it's... It's going to be a little bit awkward, probably. They're going to pick this thing up and try and move it to the right, and won't, you know, they, we can if we sort of jump it to the right. But yeah, that's that's going to be a little awkward. We we might want to possibly start the dial off at 0.5 or something like that, and let them bring it up or down from there. At which point, I don't know. Maybe the dial's not the best for alpha. Perhaps a slider up and down might be a better component to use, but I just thought use the dial there. How about we start at 0.75? There. Okay. Uh, the other thing we could try is a slider to make this bigger or smaller. That would be fine. Yeah, shall we do that? But before we do, let me show you the different way to do the change. Uh, this is one way, the traditional on method. But note that we had to we had to you know apply a variable for the dial, and then we could access it after. Because the on method is not chainable. We cannot chain it. You can actually chain it, but then you lose access to uh, you lose access to a reference to the object sort of thing. So anyway, just basically don't chain the on method is. What I'm saying, uh, dot change though can be changed, and it's a shortcut to a dial dot on change. So we can say dot change, and then we take that function right there, copy, paste it right in there. So the arrow function or function literal or just a name function, whatever, goes right in there. What function to call when it changes? Comment that out, and this should still work for us. Okay, great. Let's try a slider. New slider dot pose, and we'll position it, uh, how about zero from the center, and something like, we'll try 70 up, I'm not sure what we need, and this is from the center this time, center and bottom. And we refresh here. And now the slider is centered underneath there. I think the cat has a long tail, so the cat doesn't quite look centered, even though it is. And remember, we've got, if we want to uh, take a look at that, we could do something like scale to the stage, dot center, and dot outline. So we can outline something like there's what the cat looks like. So as we're going to be adjusting the scale, we'll want to remember that at the moment it's going to scale from its registration point, which is this round circle up here, and it's going to get bigger going down and to the right, which won't uh, look very good for 
for us, I don't think. I think we'll want to we'll want to scale the cat around the center. Okay, can you figure out how you would you would do that? We've positioned it there. It's not exactly in the right place, but uh, let's, let's lift it up a bit. We could dot move it, dot move a certain amount, but uh, I think probably best to just say, well, let's make it 100 up. You know, just start playing with these numbers, or we could do the place thing again. That's probably good enough for now. It's too close to the cat, so we're going to move the cat up. And we centered the cat, dot move. We've already used center on it. We may as well move it uh, zero in the X. We're not going to move it in the X, although moving it in the X also might help because right now it looks like the cat is over to the right. We'll move it a little bit over in the X. How about minus uh, 50? And then we're going to move it up a bit, 100. Oh, sorry, up minus 100. And we refresh here. It's a little bit up too much. Call it 70. And the 50 seems okay. All right, and get rid of this outline. Well, whatever. Maybe we could move the slider over a little bit still. Or if there's another component over here on the right, we or you know something over here on the right, maybe made in Zim sort of thing, that would balance it out probably a little bit. It seems a little bit to the left here. So if we wanted to take the slider here, we positioned it at zero in the center. That means zero from the center. If we said something like 50 from the center, then that moves over a touch. And now I feel like it's underneath the cat a bit better. So this is 50 from the center. So it just took it, zeroed it, and then moved it 50. Okay, that's how that works. We, the slider also does have a sound thing. So, so this is what a slider for sound would look like. Oh, that surprised me. Uh, it's also been adjusted to be a vertical slider. So you can probably say vertical colon false. And then it's back to a horizontal slider with the, oh, what was that called again? <laughs> I can never remember what that's called. You guys remember what that's called? Some accent, that's it, an accent. Uh, the, the color thing could look a little bit special. All right, we're not going to apply those though. Let's see what happens when we do a change on the slider, a dot change. And we'll call this arrow function. And inside there, if we don't have a reference to the slider, we can't, I can't just say slider, and unless I say const slider there, we can use the event object. Remember e.target? So collect e, and then we can say e.target. So let's zog what e.target.current value is. And let's see what the slider does when we adjust it. I come over here again. It goes from 1 to 10. And note the default slider doesn't have ticks and it doesn't have a step. So that's the default slider. And it's going from 0 to 10. Well, we don't want it ten. We don't want this cat to be ten times scale. So we'll probably want to start with the minimum. I, I suspect the minimum and the maximum are the first things there. So here's the dial. There's the slider right there. Min, max, step, and what button to use, bar lengths, and various other things for the slider. All right, let's um, put in a min and max then of what we want min. Well, let, we'll try it this time without using the object literal there, or the configuration object. Min is the first thing, zero, or we could say null because the, the min is already null. <laughs> we could spell null. Anyway, zero is fine. Um, max, well, actually is zero fine. Maybe we don't want it to disappear. What if we only want it to go to 0.5 and we want our max to go to um, 2.5, 2. .5, two. Oh, we're going to run into a problem now because remember we already 
we've already scaled the the CAD. So that's all right. We can put in a start. Oh, but if we put in, look, we want to get to the start thing here. And those we added later, current value. So we've got a current value way the heck down there. We don't want to use normal parameters to get to specify a current value. If we wanted to, we could specify it here outside. We could say slider dot current value equals as a property. And that's how we used to do it. But then, as you can see, later on, we decided, hey, that would be handy as a parameter. Because doing this, we would have to say const slider. So it was always a bit of a pain. We'd make a slider, and then uh, to be able to set its current value, starting value, basically, we, we'd have to make sure to put it in a variable and then use that variable. In ZimCat, we decided to I don't know if we did, we did this, but we decided anything that was a little painful like that, we wanted to fix. So we came along and we added way down here at the end current values. And we did that with most of the components as well. So that we don't have to put it in a variable if we don't want to. We can just put it right in here. But what it does mean is we need to go min colon 0.5, max colon 2, and then current value colon. Mm. What is the, the scale of the cat? Well, it doesn't really matter. We can just say cat dot scale. So whatever the current scale of the cat is, that's, that's what we're going to start at. Because up here, we've already scaled the cat to the stage. We don't really know what scale is 60% of the stage is what it is in the width or 60% of the height, one or, the, one or the other. But why not use the property? Speaking of properties, uh, when I did this alpha up here, that's one way to do the alpha with the property. We could have used the short chainable cat.alp like that. Those two are exactly the same. Alp just it is alp is like one line of code that just said or it's two line of code it says do this and then return cat or return the object that's what alp is so when you're when you're needing to chain when you've got multiple things going on loop change etc when you need to change go ahead and use alp but if you don't need to change really then you can use either one whichever one you prefer this i suppose was a little bit shorter you don't have to. In that case, uh, I just was in the mood to use the alpha property. Okay, but either one of those would be fine. Down below here, we're wanting to change a scale. And the same deal, we're wanting to change the scale of the cat. So cat.scale uh, is equal to, we can set a scale this way, the e.target.current value. That's one way or cat.ska, and then the same thing, target.value, that's also there. And then the stage.update, possibly if we need it. I think in the past, um, the stage.update was happening before the change event called the stage.update inside, um, inside of Zim to update the slider. I think, though, since that time, we said, well, wait a minute. Why are we doing that? Why not just update the stage after, after we dispatch the change event? That's a little bit advanced. You don't need to worry about that. So I believe that uh, we no longer need the stage.update in there. Uh, stage.update will, will, will take batteries. It takes processing. So every time we update the stage, we have to redraw um, this stuff. No problem with bitmaps are coming from the GPU. No problem. Uh, some of the vector things, though, the circles in here are not, so they have to be vector calculated again. Again, no problem making a couple of these things. But if you get too much that you need to change, that can bog on mobile a little bit. So we have to be careful. We don't want to do multiple stage.updates if we don't want to. Zim has this thing called Optimize Capital all capital letters optimize equals true and that will uh, that will make it so that the components never update the stage it's only up to you and then you can put one stage.update in here and you know that that's the only one that's going to be doing the components won't do any updating 
All right, uh, don't worry too much about that though. Let's save this up. We haven't changed this in a while. We're getting an error at the moment. Um, well, let's see what it is. I can't remember, I've been goofing around in here so much. All I need to do is find my browser. Okay, so refresh here. Uh, unexpected token on 51. Sounds easy enough. I think we forgot a squiggly bracket. So we start with the squiggly bracket. Here's the end of the squiggly bracket. And that's that refreshed. And here's this refreshed. Okay, so you ready? There it goes. Wow, that's the scale of the cat. But uh, uh, once again, it's scaling from the top left corner, getting bigger and smaller. Also, I, I, did it start in the right place? I, I suppose so. Must be close to the scale anyway that we chose. Okay, so now let's adjust this a little bit. How about, uh, it seemed like it was getting quite big and going off the page. So we're going to take that to 1.5. But the most important thing is to center reg our cat. So there's center reg. And now if we bring the outline, we'll see what that does to it. There's the registration point. So now the cat is going to scale about this point or the picture, which means it'll stay on the screen a little bit better. it does. If you wanted to, to limit that, you'd say, well, okay, that looks like 0.8. So we could do 0.8, maybe a little bit smaller. How are you doing out there? <laughs> it's been a long one, huh? We're nearly done. <laughs> uh, but hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, 0.8. And we'll go smaller to 0.1. Refresh. Little cat, big cat, little cat, maybe too little, 0.2. And when it gets big, it hits the dial, 0 0.75. <laughs> Let's try it now. Whoa, there we go. Okay. Good. And then the alpha of the cat. So there we are using components on the canvas to adjust an image. Remember that you can read about the image in the tips. Also, uh, we've added image to the docs. So uh, there I am in the docs. I want to go up to the top again. I can type in um, images or it's right here. So there's the frame. The frame handles images and sounds. So that's loaded into an asset. Uh, but if you want, you can read about it here. And there's some options about what you can do, how to do it. So that's how to load in different images in different ways. Here's how to load in different sounds in different ways. Okay, and that's also in the tips. I am Dr. Abstract. Uh, this has been uh, Zim Basics. Uh, we'd love to see you at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. Come in and ask any questions you want. More and more people arriving there every day. Uh, it's a good, good community. Um, we'd be happy to help. All right, take it easy. Look forward to the next Zim Basics. Cheers.